I'm going to show you how to make the fastest ship in the galaxy. This is the fastest ship that you can create in Starfield, and it's so damn fun to fly. Welcome back to Fudge Muppet. My name is Scott, and today I'm going to show off this badass ship, and I'm going to show you how to make it. As well as being the fastest ship in the settled systems, it is tight and it is compact. For those of you who really want an experience akin to flying a Starfighter as opposed to a freighter, it is amazing to fly in first person, and its compactness and speed speed make it a breeze to fly in this view and let me tell you it is very immersive on a widescreen monitor. I designed this ship specifically with the Bounty Hunter build in mind which will be hitting the channel real soon so subscribe and turn on your notifications for that. I personalized this ship to his character but of course you can just take the design principles and adjust it to your specific needs or desires. This is a C-class ship with a C-class reactor and I managed to squeeze bits and bobs around so that I could make it as compact as possible while maintaining a cool look. First, I'll take you on a little tour of the ship, which given its size will be relatively quick, and then I will show you in the most visually understandable way possible how to build it. Afterwards, I'll also give you some additional variations, one that builds upon this design to give it some extra punch, sacrificing a little bit of compactness, and at the end, I'll show you how to modify this Bounty Hunter ship into a more expansive design that emulates the vibes of a Star Wars Bounty Hunter ship quite well, I think, like something you would find landing in Narshida. Let's dive in. This is Charlotte. I liked the name for the ship, just a role-playing reason that will be made clear in the upcoming Bounty Hunter build. Conceptually, I was looking at the whole host of Bounty Hunter and Mandalorian type ships, something that could, using Starfield's option, create a ship that gives a similar feel, but still looks like it's firmly part of the Starfield universe. I wish I could design the ship exactly like the Slave One of Django and Boba Fett, but you can't really copy that layout. Maybe mods will fix that and offer the ability to have vertical habs. That'd be cool to see. But inspirations like the Razor Crest from The Mandalorian were at the forefront. However, I didn't want to one-to-one -one recreate it because that would require some changes that don't fit this fast ship build. The key to making a fast ship is to use A-class engines. That's right. While it's very tempting to use the big C-class engines, you will find that the bigger and higher class the engine, the lower top speed it has. C-class usually with a top speed of 130 versus 140 for Class B engines and 150 for Class A's. However, Class A engines don't give us enough thrust to move a big ship well without tanking our mobility, which just is not the goal here. This particular engine is the White Dwarf 3015 by Relodyne. It requires Starship Design 4. This, by the way, is practically an essential skill if you really want to make top tier ships. And it affords us a top speed of 180, which with the engine system skill at rank 3 gives us 20% more speed, resulting in a top speed of 215, which is super cool. This particular design only uses three engines as well, with a mobility of 95, so we can get away with less power allocation needed for those engines and keep the compact design. Remember, this ship design is the fastest, but still tailored to the Bounty Hunter style of ship. I'm sure it's possible to create an even lighter ship, perhaps emulate an X-Wing or something, but if we want the best generator and a good number of weapons, we do have to make some specific design decisions because of some attachment limitations. And yes, this is a top tier C-class reactor despite its small size. One thing that's really important to remember is that it seems that Starfield has a lowest common denominator system when it comes to top speed. If I were to try and equip a class C engine in addition to these or sub out one of them for a C-class engine, it reduces the top speed to 130, same as B-class to 140. Basically, I don't know if there is some math in the background with engine thrust and whatnot, but it seems that your top speed is determined by your lowest speed engine. So we need to have these engines and only these engines. They also only have an attachment on the top and the bottom, which also limits us in terms of design, especially if we want it to remain compact so it is awesome to pilot in first person without clunking your ship around in an asteroid field. I went with the Hopetech Armstrong cockpit because it felt the most Mandalorian to me, and it's a tight cockpit with an awesome view. As a bounty hunter jumping into the pilot seat, it just 
feels right. Feels more like sitting in the cockpit of the Slave 1 in terms of size. And to keep this beast as compact as possible while leaving some utility space, I went with a single Hope Tech 2x1 Hab so I have a bed to sleep in often for that 10% XP boost. You could also perhaps try to use only a single 1x1 companionway or storeroom, but this would be difficult to pull off without just replacing it with an additional structural piece. And you have to consider it limits the aesthetic and design options because the hangar and the docker have to come out the one spot. And you have to consider the limits of aesthetic and design options if you do this because then the hangar and the docker have to come out the same one by one hab. It's also worth noting that the bounty hunter build makes great use of several tech skills as well as some science skills so that the most can be squeezed out of the small design. Rank 4 of ballistic systems has been used so we can squeeze more damage out of the three railguns that are equipped and rank 4 of astrodynamics in the science group has been taken so we can squeeze the most out of a smaller fuel tank and more compact grav drive. You'll also be able to jump across the settled systems in a single jump this way in most instances. Also the cargo as you can expect is quite small. Before we jump into the shipbuild itself let's give you an interior tour and it is very short. The Hope Tech landing bay is sitting snug right under the cockpit for easy access and when we go through it we pop up in the front end of the all-in-one berth. There is some seating, some misc furniture, in the midsection there is a little eating table and kitchen and at the back there are two bunk beds and to the port side is a Hope Tech docker. Everything is central, everything is basically one room bar the cockpit and even that is tiny. This is a compact ship. Hope you enjoyed that interior tour, let's get to the build itself. Okay, unlike the previous two ship builds we have done on the channel where we split the ship into layers and went over each layer individually, because this is such a small ship it's much easier to just break it down completely and build it from a base. So before we start this is easiest to build at Hope Town on Polvo in the Valo system, but you will need to go to other locations to get some of the Nova, Stroud and Deimos parts, but the easiest way to access all the non-unique parts in a single location is to make an outpost with a large landing pad at which you can ship build. Starting with the Armstrong 20R cockpit by Hope Tech, this is the most Bounty Hunter vibe cockpit to me and it is placed in the front of the Hope Tech 2x1 all-in-one berth. That's it for inhabitable spaces. Behind the cockpit is a Deimos Spine B which will be used as a weapon mount and it helps bring together the aesthetics so we don't have the cockpit sitting high above the hab weirdly. The next simple step is to add the Hope 4 landing bay underneath the cockpit. Its front is aligned with the cockpit itself and the hangar will connect to the underside of the front of the berth. Next we can slot in the RD3000 beta grav drive which is a B class part. It affords us a 30 light year jump range and it remains compact so it sits snug underneath the back of the berth hab. Next we have the pinch 8A reactor and attach that to the back of the ship. You will notice that there are no ways to slot something onto the back of that particular reactor so we circumvent this with some structural pieces. We use two Nova braces attached to the first of our White Dwarf 3015 engines with the two braces covering the length of the reactor and the back of the hab. And then two additional of these engines will be stacked underneath the first. This is the core of the ship made. Let's attach the rest of the pieces. We use four Hope 55 landing gear which you will need to get at Hope Town. And to be clear, you don't need four of these, but I think aesthetically it looks way cooler. There are plenty of instances where you can get away with less landing gear, but the ship just doesn't look like it could physically bear its weight properly and that just bothers me to no end. They give the ship this sort of bulkier kind of muscled look I guess. I don't know it just feels bounty hunter to me. In between the landing gear there are spaces so that we can fit in some extras. On the starboard side we have a 400 cm ballast cargo hold and slotted underneath that we have a 33T defender shield generator and while it isn't the best shield I wanted something that can fit in this particular space. Many of the C-class shields require a flat surface. On the port side we have the H30 Atlas Helium tank placed on the side of the grav drive and above it connected to the hab is the Hope 11 docker. We then have two Horizon weapon mounts with Jishaku ND RF rapid railguns which are attached to either side of the foremost Nova Bracer and an additional railgun mounted on an equipment plate is placed between them. Then in front on top of the Deimos Spine B we have a Vanguard Starseeker pulse laser. For this weapon you will need to have made some progress in the UC 
Vanguard questline to get access to it. You can swap those weapons out for whatever combination you enjoy most, but it's also worth noting that you don't have to use the Nova Braces, but instead you could use a structural hull piece that also has an attachment slot on each side. You could get a shield and place it on top of the back engine or on the other Nova Bracer, but I just didn't like the way it looked, and the shield we have is nice and tucked away so I don't have to look at it. So that is the fastest ship in the galaxy, a tight and compact design ideal for dogfighting in asteroid fields, and it also has a minimal hit to mobility despite having only three engines, with a total mobility value of 95, which is pretty damn good. It goes without saying that this ship is good for those with minimal or no crew. However, despite its amazing speed and compactness with this particular design, we don't have many weapon slots, and personally I didn't want to compromise the look by swapping it out for a Deimos cockpit or something like that that can mount weapons on the underside. So I have also created an upgraded version of this particular ship that has more weaponry and more engines. Let's have a look. This is the weapon stacked version. It still sits at a top speed of 180, and in fact, thanks to the additional engine, it gets a mobility of 100 rather than 95. However, you have to vibe the expanded look. Again, I particularly wanted the compact design, but I think this one looks cool as well. It feels more like a Hornet or something, like the bug, not the Halo vehicle. It has a fat ass, which is made by adding an additional of the same White Dwarf engines atop the third, but in order to integrate it into the design nicely, as well as provide more weapon space, we will need to add another Nova Bracer in front. These Nova engine struts are invaluable for design integration as they can be placed to make the design look as if it is intentional by giving it a more appealing silhouette. You could, if you really wanted, choose to forego these structural pieces and instead just place even more weapons, but I want to look cool while speeding through the sky. The Nova engine struts will sit on top of the front Nova brace, connecting the stacked one at the back, and the two mounted railguns will remain either side of the front Nova brace. The third railgun will be moved with its equipment plate mount onto the tallest Nova brace race, and two additional Star Seeker lasers are placed either side of that on weapon mounts. Of course, you can place whatever weapon combo you like, this is just what the Bounty Hunter build uses. Now you have the fastest ship in the galaxy, a little bulkier but still cool, and functionally it's even better. But let's keep cooking. If you aren't interested in being the fastest compact ship in the galaxy, well then we can work to expand the design a bit more. This is a larger bounty hunter ship, built as a bigger version, but still fitting the personality of the bounty hunter build. I kept the Star Wars bounty hunter inspiration, but I also looked to a bunch of the asymmetrical Star Wars ships, which I actually really like, and so things have been changed up a bit. This thing still has a top speed of 140, of course faster with the engine system skill, but I really wanted to use the Dun 30 engines. They just remind me a lot of the unique personalized ships in Star Wars. Something with a lot of character, a unique piece, not a uniform starfighter. Something that feels unique to the character who pilots it. As I said, I really like asymmetrical ships, so I took these already asymmetrical looking engines and placed them in varied alignment on a ship that is already asymmetrical. It keeps similar motifs to the smaller version, so it feels related, but there are some big differences. A quick interior tour first. The hangar bay and cockpit are the same, and the all-in-one berth is now on the starboard side with the docker also attached here. This is the lopsided wing part of the ship. The hangar bay now opens up into a 2x2 brig hab by Hope Tech, and thematically I thought this was really cool. This provides two cells where the bounty hunter and his crew would hold any prisoners, any captured bounties. But you can't actually do that, unfortunately. It's more of a vibe thing. Maybe in the future, either Bethesda or modders add more functionality to this so that we have the option to take prisoners in alive inside our brig. It would also provide utility to all the EM weapons and knockout features of unarmed. I would even settle for a system where you can knock the target out and select them and then just place handcuffs on them. And then the message box appears saying, the bounty will appear in your brig cell when you enter your ship. Then when you enter the ship, the pirate is in the cell and then you can talk to them and they may even try and bribe you to just let them go telling you where some hidden stash is and you might even get tricked here or you just return to the planet of origin where you got the bounty and just like cargo missions he will disappear and you'll get the mission complete with extra creds and experience. Of course I'd prefer some cinematic tie them up red dead style and take them back on your shoulder type thing but I think there's fat chance of that happening. Anyways man can dream but yes the brig is really cool and adds to the role playing of a bounty hunter plus I like 
like how it's closed off to the cockpit with this door. Across the Hope Tech Brace Hab, there is an all-in-one berth, same as before. But anyways, let's build this thing. I've separated the engines and the underside so we can pan left to right and go over each piece. First, we have one of the two Hope 55 landing gear. Behind it is the docker, both attached to the all-in-one berth. Atop this is the Star Seeker laser mounted on an equipment plate. And on the front of the Hab to round out the look is the Hope Tech nose cap B, the four version. Further across, we have the Hope Tech Hab cross brace and behind it, the same Pinch 8A reactor is moved here. Both of these are attached to the 2x2 Hope Tech brig, which now acts as the main bulk of the ship. At the front is the same Armstrong cockpit with the same Deimos spine B and here is where we mount one of the rail guns. And further to the rear is now a Nova engine strut. We also swap out the old shield for an Assurance SG3000 shield generator for some extra source and then in front of this we have another laser mounted on an equipment plate. On the front of this hab is the Hope Tech Nose A port version. And then there is another of the Hope 55 landing gear attached to the side. Let's now place the engines. These are the Dun 31 engines. They look awesome and each has a particular placement. The first attaches directly to the rear of the brig on the port side rear. The second stack of gear attaches next to it just like so. This is made up of a Nova bracer at the base with a hauler shielded cargo hold attached to the back. It doesn't have to be shielded but just may as well be. This lower part snaps onto the back of the brig and atop this is another Nova Bracer with Nova engine struts. Either side of this is a weapon mount with a rail gun and all this is attached to the engine struts that were on the top of the brig. And of course there is another of the same engines attached to the back of that. Another Nova Bracer with an engine attached to the back sits next to this engine and to its right another engine is snapped on. Okay, let's tackle the underside. The entire underside layer includes a Hope 5 landing gear, the same beta grav drive, the same landing bay, same fuel tank but attached on the inner side here, and the accompanying bits are the Deimos hull A and a Stroud nose cap E. All this can slot in underneath like so, and to pad out the other side with some structure, we have another Deimos hull and Stroud nose cap with a Deimos skeg A sitting at the back. So now the design looks a little more filled out. This ship is most all about the vibes. It's not as fast as the prior two models, but it does have more of an interior and greater shield power. It's also about the rule of cool. So that is a larger version of the Bounty Hunter ship, but personally my favorite is still the OG, the leanest and most compact version at the beginning of the video. However, if you want to squeeze out some more firepower and you don't mind the four engine stacked look, plus you need that five more mobility, then the second version is for you. I will also say something I love about the first one is that I never have to muck around with the allocation of power as all the distribution is stacked with only the grav drive having a few remaining slots. But everyone, that is the fastest ship in the galaxy, the Bounty Hunter ship. I love making ships in Starfield. It has turned out to be one of my favorite systems and I like to get creative with it. We are creating a ship build guide for all of our character builds so that you too can replicate or be inspired by the designs that feature in our videos. Like the video if you enjoyed the ship build. This one has been really fun to make and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that later this week you will see the bounty hunter character build when it drops thanks so much for watching guys my name is scott from fudge Muppet, and i'll be back to nerd out with you again real soon